Hi there, Grade 12s, and welcome to our revision of your CAT Paper 2. Um, this was your theory paper. So, um, in this video, I'm going to be going through uh, question 1, 2, and 3 with you. So, please do check the description uh, down below, and you're going to find a link. I think it should be the same link that I used before, um, but it will have your question paper, the theory question paper, and the memo in it. But the purpose of these videos now is to try to get you to understand where you went wrong. So I'm going to be very honest with you. This was not an easy paper. Um, but let's, let's go through everything and see where we can help you. Okay, so section number one or, or question number one dealt with multiple choice questions. So again, one of the simplest strategies is to eliminate um, the answers which you know it's not okay so we've got four options you know maybe b and c has got nothing to do with that particular question so what are you going to do you already eliminate it cut it out it must go all right um, then you're only left with two options and this is where you now start thinking okay as, as bad as what that sounds like right um, because this gives you now obviously a 50 50 chance again if you've if you've studied and you understand the work not just know the work understand it um, it'll then help you so let's look at 1.1 let's see how how, how hard uh, this section was it says a physically disabled person who cannot use the keyboard with ease will benefit from using this specific program or software when he or she wants to type a letter on the computer so already it's telling us we've got a physically disabled person who cannot use the keyboard so it might be motor function problems you know anything like that it means that they can't physically type okay so we've got a dragon naturally speaking b math pad c mouse skills and d coral draw so for me immediately d is out coral draw is a program um, that really focuses on drawing focuses on on artwork and things like that it's got nothing to do with um, giving instructions to the pc okay math pad also out it must go it's got nothing to do with this so we left with mouth oh not mouth mouse skills sorry and dragon naturally speaking so um, some of you might not be aware of this but dragon naturally speaking is software that allows me to give verbal instructions to the computer and for the computer to carry that out so of those options um, the answer is a right let's look at the next one what is the difference between upgrading of software and updating of software? So A says there's no differences. In both cases, you have to go online. So already, <laughs> gone, right? Let's look at the next one. Uh, for updating software like Word, you need a license, but for upgrading, um, it is necessary, okay? Perhaps. C, when you update software, you probably buy a newer version. And when you upgrade, you download fixes. Now, no. I want you to think of it this way. When we deal with updates, uh, we're changing something small to the way the current program is functioning. So if I upgrade my phone, I'm changing the entire phone, physical phone, to something different. When I update my phone, I'm simply changing the software on the phone itself. So, when they ask us in the question, what is the difference between upgrading of software and updating of software? Updating the software is just applying certain fixes, patches, changing, um, you know, the way the software works to a newer version. Upgrading is where I completely change the software itself to another or newer version. For example, going from Office 2012 or 2013 to Office 2016. That is an upgrade. Um, and not updating so of these options the only one that was correct was d which said when you upgrade software you probably buy a newer version but when you update you download fixes so for number uh, 1.2 that was d right 1.3 says which one of the data types in ms access ensures that the field serves as a primary key now remember when we talk about primary keys we're talking about one particular field that's going to be the most unique one out of the list that you'll find there. So they mentioned to us here, uh, A, hyperlink, 
B auto number, C OLE object, and D memo. Okay, so um, memo long text that is already out because with that we're going to be putting like a long um, area of text and uh, that's got nothing to do with being unique. An OLE object is where we are going to be using that where we're saying, listen, in this field we want to enter a picture, you know, or bring some sort of object through. Um, a hyperlink that is not going to be part of it's got nothing to do with it at all so the only um, sorry the only option there is b which is auto number now remember what auto number does every time we enter a record of data into our database or into our table as we go down from one record to the next to the next it generates an automatic number and that automatic number is always unique okay so that's where uh, that comes from. So 1.3 is B. 1.4, you want to use a function to search for a value uh, that appears the most in a data range, right? The best function to use is what? And they give us the options of value, if, median, and mode, okay? So we're looking for the function that, sorry, we, we wanna use a function to help us see the value that appears most. Now already, if is out okay because remember our if statements we need like three criteria to say well if this number or if in this range this particular number is greater than five um, this is what it must do so it can't it can't be an if right um, can it be value no that's looking for a specific value we don't need that we left in with median and mode okay so what do these two do median gives us the middle number in a range of sorted numbers and that leaves us then with the only option left which is mode so mode is the is the function that's going to give us the most frequently occurring number in a particular range All right let's go over the page 1.5 says uh, sales or holiday bookings over the internet uh, is known as and they give us e-commerce tweets okay immediately tweets are out VoIP, VoIP is out because voice is voice over IP. Um, this is like us having um, WhatsApp calls, right? That's voice over IP. Ergonomics, we know that is the study of human interaction with computers, um, looking at things like RSI, repetitive strain injury and those things. Has that got anything to do with booking a holiday online? No. So the only option there is e-commerce or what we call electronic commerce or commerce that takes place over the internet, okay? Right. Okay, so 1.6 says to us, once data has been collected, it must be processed. A spreadsheet is an ideal tool for analyzing data. Remember, data is our raw facts. Which one of the features mentioned below does not, and they've got it in capital letters, not contribute to the analysis of data? Graphs and charts, tracking changes, conditional formatting, or functions and formulas, okay? So which one does now? Can we analyze things by using graphs and charts? Yes, we can. We can take our data and turn that into a chart that shows us you know, visually um, what the results of our data is. Um, can we use tracking changes? Where do we use tracking changes? People, this was used in Microsoft Word. When we um, are sending a document to someone and we want that person to make changes, that person can put in their changes and comments we get it back and then we can turn on track changes to see what changes the person has indicated we should be doing, um, any comments that are there, and then we can accept those changes or reject those changes. So immediately there's your answer already, right? Because that pertains to Microsoft Word. So in 1.6, the one that doesn't contribute to um, analysis of data is B. 1.7, which method or source would be the most suitable to use to gather information about other residents' opinion on service delivery. Okay, now if you want to get people's input on service delivery or things like that, you're going to give them some sort of questionnaire, some sort of survey, something like that. Okay, so let's look at the options. <laughs> Here we go. What does A say? Survey. Okay, um, do we need to go further? Okay, let's go further. We already know what the answer is, but let's just go further. B says community newspaper. No, we're not going to use a community newspaper to ask people for their opinion because how are we going to get that back? National newspaper, same story. An interview. People, there's a difference between an interview and a survey. If I'm interviewing someone, 
I'm asking them questions to be able to get to know them better for the purpose of hiring them or employing them. What does a survey do? A survey just wants to get your opinion on something. It wants to get your input on a particular issue. Okay, so 1.7 is A. 1.8, the catchphrase, it's criminal if it's not original. What does that describe? Now, when we talk about computers and things like this, immediately you've got to think of piracy. Okay, not the pirate you see on a ship. No, <laughs> but we operate in the same way. Why? Because most of you, um, I'm, I suppose I'm going to include myself. <laughs> um, most of us do what? We download movies, don't we? Hmm, that's a problem. Why? Because you're not paying for it. So if you're watching a movie, and I'm just using an example, that you have now downloaded, wherever you've downloaded from, or you're streaming it somewhere, if you didn't pay for that, and it's a movie that, you know, is at the cinema, um, and people are paying to watch it, but you're watching it for free at home, um, unfortunately, that is a method of piracy, which means you are watching it illegally. So if you are getting your software, Microsoft Office, anything like that, and you haven't paid for it, these things have a license. So when you are doing that, you are unfortunately engaging in illegal activities, right? So here we go. The catchphrase, if it's, crim it's criminal, if it's not original, describes what? A, the theft of intellectual property. B, hacking into a computer. Now, hacking has got nothing to do with things being original. Hacking is just them wanting to break through and steal something. Software piracy. Software piracy is when we are um, using software and we may be using somebody else's license code or we've got a crack that actually activates it without it really, you know, going onto the internet and things. So that could be something text encryption that's got nothing to do with that. And the theft of intellectual property is something uh, else as well. So um, it's definitely going to be C, software piracy. 1.9. Which one of the following is not a formula that is available for calculations in a word table? Now immediately, stop. When it comes to word and we insert a table in word, there are only certain formulas that we can use. We can't go and use an if statement or nested if and a V look up people. No. Okay. So let's already cut that out. It uses very simple formulas. So let's look at the options. A, we've got len. Right? Um, B, we've got sum, which is a simple, normal. In fact, if you go back to grade 10, what do you have? Min, max, sum, and average. Those are your four basic formulas. Um, those are the ones that word can handle. So it can handle sum. Average, it can handle average. Um, even count, it can handle count because it's just going to count the cells. But it cannot handle len. Okay, so without even knowing, I'm, I'm not even going to go into it, without even knowing what len does, I've already seen, as, uh, seen that as my answer because by process of elimination, the others make sense, whereas Len does not. Again, I'll be starting to see that by, by understanding um, how programs work and what you've done in grade 10 and 11 and grade 12, um, I'm already answering this <laughs> fairly quickly. Okay. Then 1.10, our last one, says the overall design of an ent entire document including the colors, fonts, and effects, are known as what? Is it known as the style? Is it known as B, the template? Now, remember what a template is. Um, if in Word you want to, um, you know, type out a letter or so on, and they give you a template, it means they give you the basic structure of what um, a document should look like or a letter should look like and you would go and you'd fill in whatever you need to so they give you the basic structure of something when it comes to a template um, can it be auto text no it's got nothing to do remember they're talking about everything in the document including the fonts the colors the effects that's going to be option number c which is the theme so just like you have a themed party what happens the entire area um, you know, is decorated according to the theme. You dress according to the theme. You eat according to the theme. So all of those things together um, is what gives us C as our answer, which is theme. So grade 12s, um, I hope you understand now what the answers are and why the answers are what they are from question one and where maybe you've gone wrong. Don't forget um, the description or you know, in the description, I have the link to these documents. So please go and check it out. Go through it. Use this video as revision. Um, and as usual, you know, just share it with 
anyone who will find value. I'm gonna do, I was actually planning on just doing um, one video on all three questions, but it, it seems like it's gonna take too long. So anyway, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in our next video.